idea of how to explain what the spirit is. And, uh, sorry, my dog's trying to get into the room. She got excited. <laughs> okay, so. He's a fan. I'm basically a pragmatist. Um, I'm a deist, but uh, I think I have a pretty good model or explanation of what's going on as far as the the uh, bifurcation between atheists and theists and all these um, existential philosophy and things like this. Um, so I'll just hit y'all with the whammy and not really um, let the uh, situation go on continuously. So I'll just hit you with the whammy. Okay. Uh, so in my point of view, uh, science, science has built in sort of uh, constituents that only allow certain ideas through like a filter, and um, these are from uh, the principles from Newton, um, Aristotle, the Cartesian ideals, Baconian ideals, and uh, these are certain ways for uh, learning certain ideas about reality. I take the Alfred North Whitehead view, and I also study like uh, other philosophers, recent philosophers, uh, uh, I don't really like the 19th century philosophers, the existentialists and things like that. So what I'll do is define spirit first so you all understand, have a context. Um, so spirit would be um, the apperception of the transcendental dimension in relation to you, in, to, in the relation to where you are in space and time. So is that an acceptable model? I have no idea what that means. Do you know what well, that means? Okay, so I'll, no. I think the, the Whiteheadian idea of um, uh, things go through the formality of occurring. Why do you think, he, said, he asked the question, why do things go through the formality of actually occurring? He was basically saying, why are there plants? Why are there suns? You know, what, what is causing these things to be what they are? So um, science has gotten as far as explaining um, the the lowest common denominator of what these things are, like the, you could think of it like the plumbing level of reality. And so what I'm going to argue is sort of the um, epiphenomenal things, the things we deal with every day, the um, anecdotal things such as uh, love relationships, family, things of that nature, and why this why there's so much intellectual tension between belief systems. So my argument is, is science, the reason we take science for granted is because um, what Marshall McLuhan in the 50s came up with, he said the medium is the message. So the medium causes us to, if you accept the medium, then you allow certain things to go without really breaking them down further, you allow certain things to pass, even though uh, a normal person would go, well, wait, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, for instance, TV, T he said, TV is not what we think it is. I mean, we watch TV and things of that nature, but we don't realize that we've all accepted the TV into the house in the first place without ever uh, blinking an eye. Uh, so what I'm saying is the same thing goes for science. We've allowed science to almost be like the um, exemplar of reality instead of, and now I'll go into my argument. Well, wait, um, wait. science just deals with what we can observe and, and, and uh, experiment and what we can measure. Um, but, yeah. but what makes you assume that there's something outside of that arena that science can't adequately investigate because because of the principles that goes by the restoration of initial conditions and the uh the other one i forget what it's called uh basically it sets up the the finale in the first place it goes we're only going to accept um let's say we're running energy through a wire we're only going to accept um 
the common denominator of what we get. So we're going to throw out the weird number. If we get a thousand measurements, that's uh, 999, say eight gigas or whatever, but there's one that says 500 gigas, we'll just throw that out and we'll keep the eight gigas as the main consequence. Well, in other societies, they don't do that. They do the opposite. They look at, well, why did the, the 500 gigas come up in the experiment? So, so, so these other societies that, that don't use um, the scientific method, um, what about those? Which societies uh, are you talking about? That's the kind of medium is the message thing I was talking about earlier where uh, science is sort of like saying we are the exemplars of what reality is when in fact there's, it's not exactly here nor there. I mean... There's societies that base everything off of spirituality. There's in like in India, they don't give a hoot about the mundane, like the principles and stuff. They only care about um, the weird and what you know things that stand out and stuff. And so I'm kind of saying uh, science is like kind of. I mean, it has achieved amazing uh, materialistic things, but in my argument I'm about to make, I think I have a superior model to explain um, the kind of intellectual tension and how to move forward through that. Well, sort of the idea that like science comes to answers and conclusions and stuff. And in reality, most of the answers aren't there. The, they're, the mystery still um, exists. And that's sort of the tension we have uh, so let me let me get back to the the model I have of what what's going on. So um, building on Western psychotherapy as elaborated by Freud and Jung, um, and I'm going to use a placeholder instead of the actual thing because I think I don't want to like this news doesn't travel well. So I'm going to use a placeholder instead of the actual word so that people kind of can get used to the idea at first because it's kind of it's kind of offensive to some people. It doesn't travel well, but so building on Western psychotherapy by Freud and Jung spirit is the part of your mind that you'd rather not do business with. It's the, um, it's like your, your childhood neglect or possibly, um, something that happened to you when you're a child. Um, it's kinky fantasy, repressed kinky fantasies, in other words, the union unconscious, the idea that um, you can do certain met- use certain methods to close the close the, um, the or decrease the difference between your conscious and unconscious, and then be able to accelerate psychotherapy because you've made the unconscious conscious. That's still, so, that's still part of your brain, though, right? Are, why are you why are you labeling it spirit? Uh, I guess I would label it spirit because uh, it's really what. If you had to put it into a, into a physical model, which which is what I guess atheists are trying to do is find these physical models for um, no a- a- atheists are people who don't believe in a god. Well, okay, yeah. So then, I guess. Maybe materialists, maybe? So, yeah, materialists or philosophers are trying to always find transcendent or uh, material ideals for these transcendental uh, things. Well, they don't so, accept they don't accept that there is a transcendental, right? They they're dealing with what they can observe and measure. Right, but uh, then how do you explain what's going on to create these things in the first place? Like, how do you explain what comes out of the uh, the formality of things that actually occurring, like how do you explain new ideas? Were they always there in the brain, or were they what what caused this to all of a sudden um, percolate out of the mind? Well, I guess I don't have any reason to think that it's a that it's transcendental, that it's not just a function of the brain. Right. So, and then and then you can get into you know what what is the brain. And uh, and then you try and break it down, and then you just get into the scientific theory of atoms and stuff, which goes back to the 
the whole thing of it's just uh, the plumbing level of reality. Right, uh, but, but to, in order to accept that there's something external that's that's part of reality, doesn't there need to be some kind of evidence for that? Yes, correct. That's why when I'm explaining this stuff, it's sort of, you, you have to like, uh, you can't just go straight for the money. You have to kind of build an idea and then once you, once your understanding builds up to a certain level, then you get like what I'm saying. Because at first it's like, okay, you're trying to get a, you're trying to like understand the interlocution of what I'm saying. And then when you get to the meat of it, then you go, oh, okay, that's what he's saying. That's the, so, what he's talking about when he says transcendental. Zach, this is starting to sound suspiciously like the Christian who says, hey, if you just believe then you'll see that there's all this evidence for God and Jesus. Well, that's a red herring because I'm I'm actually I was going to tell you he just stopped me in the middle of my explanation of what the argument was. Well, this just seems so incredibly the, complex for a you know for a call-in show that's kind of of limited time, and we've yeah we've we've barely okay, well, let me scratched finish, the let me surface. Let just finish my argument, and then I'll I'll let you off with whatever. Well, but so, your um, argument has gone on yeah, for yeah. a long time. Okay, so the shamanic model was basically what I'm talking about. The a uh, the shamanic model where uh, so these Aboriginal societies um, deputize a person to pharmacologically um, go into other dimensions using psychedelics and things of that nature mm -hmm. to go into higher dimensions. And they interact with, or to alter their um, brain chemistry with, with yeah. uh, correct. And they can, and, it, and they've seen yes, and they, and that's why it's always appropriated in that society because it actually works. Otherwise, it wouldn't. If they knew he was bullshitting the whole time, then he would never be deputized in the first place to continue doing it. But somehow he sees what people are doing when he goes into these other dimensions using pharmacological substances like psychedelics and uh well, so he's uh, able to see i think he thinks he's i think he's, he's already existing and i'm sorry i think he uh, he perceives it as seen into other dimensions possibly but that doesn't mean he's actually doing anything other than you know reacting to a substance that alters his brain chemistry well what do you think altering your brain chemistry is what do you think it's doing at the level of the brain it alters your perception of things Right, and so perceptions are what realities are made out of, correct? Like the medium no, is the message thing? No, your perceptions sometimes don't correspond to reality. That's correct, but sometimes they can. It, it's a, it's a two-way drive sometimes in some, some so, instances. So you're basing this whole argument on sometimes your perceptions correspond with reality, and sometimes correct. they don't. So what's your, I, well, what's your method like of determining when it corresponds to reality and when it doesn't. Well, I mean, I think, like I said before, I think um, the scientific thing is also, I go, what is their judgment for uh, decide? Like I hear um, things that, comp uh, that contradict all the time. Sometimes in science, they'll come out with, you need to eat more zinc. And then the other day, it's like, oh, you just needed to exercise more, things of that nature. I'm not giving you exact uh, Yeah, that, that uh, sounds data, like, that sounds like, like some kind of alt-med crap that gets bandied around all the time. And um, I don't think there's actual science based, you know, behind most of that. Well, anyway, yeah, so I was just, yeah, I'm about to go, but I was just pointing out that there is a, uh, shamanic model of reality mm -hmm. where they use psychedelic substances to change alter their state of mind and they can actually there's high and even plato he was you could think of him as a psychedelic philosopher because he recognized that uh there's rarefied dimensions as you go up in uh certain uh models of thinking i would so, just, yeah i would so, just want to see some evidence to to think that those dimensions are actually real and not just a product of the brain like well, you know yeah, 20, 20 the, people take the, the same if 20 people take the same psychedelic and they enter this dimension and they can interact with each other or or uh, 
have an experience that they can verify is the same for both of them. Uh, if it's just an individual experience, then uh, I don't see how that, how you can, you know, you have to have some way of determining whether it's real or not. I think, I think it's been determined because it's actually, there's actually a mathematical model for it. For when he goes into these one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, if you can see things while in an altered state, you must be in a higher dimensional slice in order to see down into, and like I said, we, that's anecdotal, whether he's actually seeing it. Yeah, exactly. But the question yeah. you have to ask next is, is, is if what he's seeing is worth investigating on, a, like on an atheist part, like, is this possible? Like, these are things we can actually research and see. And then if that's a possibility, then maybe someone would look into it and, and go, hey, you know. I think it's a, it's a possibility to research anything, but I guess the, the question is, has anyone actually demonstrated that, that it's real? You know, if you have a well-controlled, mm -hmm. if you have a well-controlled experiment for whatever it is you want to look into, um, you know, then, and follow the scientific method, then sure. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we have a lot of built-in assumptions in the science that are naive. Oh, and so so we can't it. test it using the scientific method because you got a problem with that. So you just have to take your word for it, right? No, no, no. I'm I'm actually suggesting that science use psychedelics and it to be a little bit more exotic. And it's well, and why it's would I need psychedelics? Well, you know, well, you know, even physicists that double slit experiments pretty psychedelic if you think about it. I mean, they're yeah. saying two things can be in two places at the same time. That's pretty crazy. I mean that's based off the uh, the uh, the guy I forget his name who thought of the uh, non-local theory of uh, information. Well, but it but it's a result of people physically doing the test and seeing what happens. They yeah. they weren't taking psychedelic drugs when they did the double slit experiment. Correct. No, I'm saying that is in itself is pretty radical. It's like the. Uh, and plus the Big Bang is pretty radical idea too, if you think about it, because that's like the... Uh, um, yeah, but the, the, the radical non-intuitive results of science are, in fact, that's an argument for science that does pay attention to, to unusual things if they have some kind yeah. of evidence that that's what's going on. Yeah, so if science gets the miracle at the beginning called the Big Bang, um, then we should all really have possible miracles in at least one other area, right? If they get the, you know, the, they have everything correct except for the the um, abyss called the black hole or the um, the Big Bang in the beginning. They don't know where that came from, but they they can work everything else off right after they get that started in the beginning. So that's where I'm kind of saying is maybe we could. Uh, actually learn more by not um, seeing things as these uh, rigid, um, as rigidly as science does, kind of. Maybe the, there's more malleable so ideas out there that don't necessarily co conform to the ideas of material. You, you only get what you see. Plus, I think it's a very naive assumption to think that there's something between real and unreal in the first place. Because who's to define what you see in your mind, at like say you're thinking of something at versus what happens in, out, in the three-dimensional space. I mean, that's really what the psychedelics are showing you is that, that possibly there's another dimension that, like Plato said, there's uh, um, archetypes that stand outside of space and time that... Uh, okay, well... Uh, th this is all fascinating, but we've given you a whole lot of show time, so I'm going to let you go now. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me speak. Sure. Have a good one. Thanks. So he, um, actually somebody from the chat wants to know how to contact Zach's dealer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was interesting. He thinks the scientific method's valid for almost everything, except there's this, like, extra dimension stuff that he thinks psychedelics will open the door for us. I'm not sure yeah. how, how we get there from here, but...